The stars have been there for thousands of years, some in groups, forming shapes that had already been seen in ancient times. Yet their light takes time to travel the distances that separates us from the stars, in some cases a very long time. And what if what we see is in reality only a sign of their past life? And what if they have already not been there for years or even millennia? Light in a vacuum travels at the speed of 299,792,458 meters per second, a constant value which physicists call C. It corresponds to almost 300,000 kilometers per second, more than a billion kilometers per hour. If we could ride a ray of light, we could go around the world seven times in just one second. The distances we were used to, meters, kilometers, or even thousands of kilometers, are too small for us to realize that light takes time to cover them. We have the impression that everything happens precisely at that moment in which we see it. We think that light bulbs light up the instant we see their light, and when we call someone on the mobile phone on the other side of the planet, the signal travels from the telephone to an antenna and from there to a satellite, and then again to an antenna on Earth. But we do not realize it. It all seems practically instantaneous to us. On an astronomical scale, however, things are different. Observe the moon. It takes 1.3 seconds for its reflected light to reach us on Earth. And when we watch the sunset, it already went below the horizon 8 minutes ago. Then, going much further away, the stars that are situated 9,500 billion kilometers appear to us as they were exactly one year ago. That's why we call this distance a light year. The entire sky is therefore an image of the past. The further we go into space, the more we go back in time. This does not mean that everything that is furthest away is necessarily older. Simply, its image, as it appears today, is no longer there. It is precisely thanks to this that we are able to reconstruct the history of the universe, and we have gone very far. We have managed to photograph the image of the universe immediately after its creation, 13.7 billion years ago. It is the furthest thing that we have been able to see, a glow emitted a few minutes after the Big Bang, just after the formation of the first atoms, a radiation that still today permeates all space and which we call cosmic background radiation. Further than this, we are not able to see anything, not even with the most powerful instruments, because the light that is beyond this distance has not yet had time to reach us. It's too far away. The speed of light, however, is not only finite, but is also the limit of all possible speed. If we were to try to exceed this barrier, we would meet increasing resistance as our speed increases, as if something were preventing us from accelerating further. We would, in a way, become increasingly heavy, and the energy required to increase our speed would become infinite. That's what happens in the big accelerators, where particles reach speeds for more than 99% of C, and thus their energy is transformed into mass. This is predicted by Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. Physicists exploit this transformation by colliding particles at huge energies. The aim is to really investigate the structure of the universe and its first ingredient, the elementary particles and those forces which, at the beginning of everything, led to the creation of space and time.